All righty. Um, it's always been one of my favorite questions, influencers, and um, sometimes they're a lifetime, sometimes they're in a minute or a moment. And, and uh, you know, my first was my grandfather when I was younger. And, um, you know, I tell this all the time, even when I speak, you know, he was from Kiev. My family was from Kiev. He had an accent. He used to take me for walks in the park in Montreal when I was five. And um, one day I asked him, I called him Zayda. I said, Zayda, how do you know all these people? And he said, one day I just smiled at somebody and then he was walking and he smiled back and then he stopped and started talking to me. And then while we were talking, another person came by and smiled at us. So we smiled back at them and talked. Mm. And this is probably, probably where I learned how to talk so much, mind you, but don't know where I learned it from. But, but it was just so impactful as a five-year-old and even later to see how you can make an influence on people. And they were influencing each other in, a, in, a, in effect as well. So... That's why I love to hear. And um, can you share with us two to three, you know, people? It could be who you know or who you don't know or whatever that have been influential in your life. Yes, I I think I'm gonna have a difficult time narrowing it down to two to three. I know it's hard. <laughs> um, I I first want to give a nod to Winsome McIntosh. Um, uh, I remember she is the co-founder of Rachel's Network, which is a group of women that fund and conservation and the White House project. And she single-handedly has gotten several women to run for office. And when I, I first met her, she of course said, you should run for office. And, and I said, oh, I'm, I finally made it. I'm this professor and I'm thinking of doing a research project to catalyze 40 million um, of impact investments. And she looked at me and without hesitation said 40 billion. And, and then I told that, shared that story with Matt Baker uh, a week later who was at Hewlett, and he said, uh, three trillion. And I just want to give a great appreciation for people like Winsome, where it's like a mentor or somebody you believe in that that's like helps you like expand the aperture and and really think bigger because that's how we came up with the laying the groundwork for the national impact investing marketplace. And like, okay, if we're gonna move a trillion dollars, what needs to be fixed in order to make that so? So I'll give a a nod to Winsome McIntosh and um, also give a nod to Erica Seth Davies and she's Real Racial Equity Asset Lab. I met her when she was at the Association of Black Foundation Executives and she's also runs Rea Ventures, um, a fund um, that invests in women's health and reproductive justice. And mm. Erica <laughs> was basically, you know, uh, not to make it too simple, was walking around to endowments like Kellogg Foundation and Silicon Valley Foundation and said, is there a reason you're not investing in diverse managers? And and they said, nobody ever, our investment advisor never brings us any. And she said, if I bring you some, will you look at them? And all of a sudden she was getting hundreds of millions of dollars to do wow. that. So she continues to be a literal trailblazer. And a lot of the work we're doing around our um, diverse emerging managers was built on and in still in partnership with her in that way. Um, awesome. Yeah. And then we're doing a lot of work on corporations now and, and there's work on funders that fund worker power and funders that fund shareholder action work. And we're working really on the inside of the corporations, helping them. They come to us and say, I want to attract a diverse workforce. I want to purchase carbon credits and I have no budget. And we show them how they can use full spectrum capital to ask what the community needs, even if it's a negative interest rate, and then reverse engineer the treasury dollars with the expenses on the corporate balance sheet, where we give a, a increase in the financial return to treasury, but we result in a negative interest rate that helps out their suppliers or their, their workers. And, um, the person, Bob Massey, I'm going to have him be my number three, reached out to me over the holidays. And he's somebody I studied in graduate school. Hmm. And so it was, it was wild to get a LinkedIn message from him. I bet. <laughs> and um, he was the first president of Ceres and then helped create GRI. And right now there's this really important movement happening where the U.S. is debating about ESG, environmental social governance, where Europe just made it a law. And they're in conversations about this concept of double materiality, which basically says, take Coke and Pepsi, is like, well, if Coke and Pepsi have to pay the full true cost of clean water, how does that affect its stock price? And how does Coke and Pepsi operating in the world affect if they take, take clean, abundant water from, say, villagers? How does that affect the community and the environment? And so 
um, people like Bob are working together to help land the double materiality uh, plane here a little bit. And um, I'm working, you know, doing my role behind the scenes to say, okay, if it is double materiality, how do we help companies make money and do the right thing at the same time and also um, be accountable to their shareholders, but also stakeholders in terms of the larger communities yeah. in the planet? Yeah, 100%. You know, high five on that one for sure. <laughs> Man. Um, Thank you for sharing those. Really super. I know there's a whole bunch more, uh, but it's kind there of sure like, like winning the Academy Award. You, you always forget somebody anyway. Um, so 100%. But I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Absolutely, Mark. It's been a pleasure.